Greenland, Scotland, Wales, Aruba, St. Martin. What do all these lands have in common? Well, not much, except for one thing. They're all countries, except not really. They're some of the world's few constituent countries. So, are they countries, or are they territories, or are they something else entirely that will only take me about 30 seconds to actually explain, but which I will also forcibly stretch out into a 45 minute video. There are numerous definitions to the term constituent countries. For example, the European Union uses the term to refer to its member nations, and it is also the term used for individual countries when talking about bilateral meetings and negotiations and stuff like that. However, that's boring, and you probably already have an image in your mind when you think of constituent states, like those that I mentioned in the intro. There are three main entities with these such constituent countries. The United Kingdom with England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Yes, Northern Ireland is a country, not a province. The Kingdom of the Netherlands with the Netherlands, Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin. And the Kingdom of Denmark with Denmark, the Faroe Islands, and Greenland. In a sense, each of these countries make up their whole nations as a whole, so the Netherlands or Denmark can refer to either constituent countries or the whole overarching authority ruling these lands. This guarantees the other countries some kind of autonomy, as these states don't necessarily have to listen to London, Amsterdam, and Copenhagen about everything, and can run a lot of their own affairs. This is probably most strongly seen in how the Netherlands, the UK, for now, and the Denmark are in the EU, but some of their constituent countries, like Greenland, are not, despite being kind of in the same country, but also kind of not. Okay, so are these places countries or not? Well, yes and no. It really depends on how you look at it. You see, Aruba is its own country, but it is also part of the Netherlands, but is also in the middle of the Caribbean, but is also in the EU, but also doesn't use euros even though the Netherlands is a euro's own country. Well that probably wasn't helpful at all, so let's look at another example. New Zealand. The realm of New Zealand also contains three constituent countries. New Zealand, the Cook Islands, and Niue. But this whole caspazzle works a bit differently than what goes on on the exact opposite side of the world. You see, the Cook Islands and Niue are kind of their own countries, but also have a free association with New Zealand, where New Zealand leaves himself governing, but administers foreign relations on their behalf, and also grants their citizens New Zealand citizenship. All these territories are also governed by the Queen of New Zealand, who also just so happens to be the Queen of the United Kingdom. Go figure. Similar to what we talked about last week, many countries, notably Russia, have partially independent nations and republics within their borders, some even with their own anthems. However, these are not independent nations, but small ethnic enclaves deemed too distinct to be fully under Moscow's control, so some leeway is granted for them to just kind of do their own thing. On the other end of the spectrum, Palau, Micronesia, and the Marshall Islands are all completely independent nations, with UN seats and everything. However, they have signed a compact of free association with the United States, when they got their independence from the US. This means that the countries can be fully independent, but their citizens can freely live and work in the US, but in exchange the US can build military bases on these islands, which could be pretty important in the near future, and US citizens can live and work in these countries as long as they want without a visa. There are numerous other examples of partially independent areas that still fall under a country's total control, and ultimately lose this video's original questions in a churning stew of questions about sovereignty. Like, if Greenland isn't independent, what about places like Hong Kong and Macau, or the individual emirates of the United Arab Emirates? And don't even get me started on all the various independence movements out there. Ultimately, this proves once again that the answer to the question, what the hell even is a country anyway, is little more than... <laughs> hell of I know. Thanks for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe, and follow me on Twitter, and join the Discord server, and support the channel on Patreon, and all the other things I usually ask you to do in these things. Okay, bye!